Let's go into another one. See if we can do a little better this time. I think if we get a better... If we wanted to ever do counters again, we'd have to like mulligan for better starts than slow starts. And mono white just seems insane. It seems like it's got a lot of support. Um, I could be wrong on that assumption, but we saw two people playing mono white. So it seems like it really has some good support cards. And we open this. Seven cost, make a six six with flashback for four. Hmm. Merfolk, I don't know how much Merfolk there is in this cube. Um, we have a Smasher, Plague Crafter. Plague Crafter is good. Um, this guy's good in mono red. Uh, I wish I knew it was all in this cube. You do. Be any of upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among everything. Otherwise, put a 1 1 counter on a creature you control. There's Battlefield, put a 1 1 counter on target creature. Man. This pack is not an easy pack. I mean, we can always go here, which is okay. If we're doing like graveyard stuff, um, hmm. Uh, I feel like this is just the best card to pick here because we're not really in an archetype. Yeah, I think we're just gonna take this, see what happens. Battlefield with two minus one minus ones. Oh, Annex is in here too. And Chandra? I think I want to turn to Mono Red. I don't know how much support Mono Red has though. I mean, we can try Elves with this guy. Hmm. I do think Annex is better than Chandra in a lot of cases. We'll take Annex and see what happens. Oof. This is not a great pack for what we have here. So. Hmm. I mean, we can try and turn constellations with this guy. We can also take a Rishkar. Um. Hmm. I really don't know. If we're wanting to go black or red, this pack doesn't do anything for us. At all. I mean, we have Thrill of Possibilities and Spark Harvest. We'll take Thrill and just hope there's enough support, I guess. I mean, Bastion of Remembrance is really good. This guy's also pretty good. And there's a dead weight. We'll take the Bastion. Wizard's Lightning, you wizard? No, you're a demigod. Man, these packs aren't great. Do we just take the Mind Stone? Wizard's Lightning is good if we have Wizards. I think we just take the Mind Stone here. It's between Mind Stone and Wizard's Lightning. I don't think we're going to be a Command the Dread Horde deck. I think we're going to take the Wizard's Lightning and hope for some Wizards. Because again, I really don't know what's in this cube. Um, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is pretty good. Or we might just turn into a, a sacrifice deck. Not blue. Create four one ones for five. We also have the lamp pad, which is okay. We'll take the lamp pad here. We fight with fire. We'll take the fight with fire. 
This isn't seeming great. At all. We'll take the 1-1. One, one. Good sack fodder. Do we take the demon? Or do we take the, re um, the skeleton that can get itself back? Sacrifice a creature, something gets minus one, minus one. Needs a lot of creatures though. Uh, I think we're gonna take the demon here. And there's really nothing in this pack, so we'll cut someone from Rishkar. Uh, claim the Firstborn would be really good in a sacrifice deck. Jaya's not insane. We'll take Claim the Firstborn. We might be able to do something with it. Alright, this deck sucks. Like, we... We went a strategy, and we're doing nothing with it. Like, absolutely nothing with it. This guy's good. Bow Strider's good. Blood Art, this pack is, like, insane for what we're trying to do. Because it also has an Angrath. But what do we think won't make it through? I think Blood Artist just goes really well with what we're trying to do. So I think we have to pick up Blood Artist, but then we're passing a Butcher and a Woe Strider, which isn't great. I think we have to take the Blood Artist if we're trying to go Sacrifice. Vicious Offering is really good. Scrap Heap Scrounder is really good. What do you do? Enter the battlefield, return target creature from graveyard to hand, turn to bone reveals, you may choose a non-creature from it, discard. I think we just go scrap heap, because it's like a recurring like sack outlet. And it's just pretty good early game. I don't know if that's the right choice. I also don't think we can play Annex. I mean if we play Annex, we can sack a creature to get a creature and then sack it again. Or not it, but like a, the 1-1. One, one. What do we have here? Tax, create a treasure token, and sack a treasure token to give it plus 1, plus 0. Oh. Sacrifice a creature, exile the top card, and then play it. Timret, Brain Maggot, Vulture... If your combat on your turn, each player mills three cards. I think it's between Brain Maggot and Captain Lannery. I think we're going to take the Brain Maggot for Hand Disruption. And then Hand Disruption, we have this that can go well in a Sacrifice, because it gives me two creatures instead of one. And sacrifice a creature to give this guy first strike, and whenever I sacrifice, it gets plus two plus O. Oh. I feel like Thalid would just be better. I mean, there's also a kill spell here. We'll take Thalid. You cast a non creature spell plus one plus O oh until end of turn. Again, a non creature strategy. So, we really don't have much. Sacrifice to put a counter on him. What do we take here? Do we just take the Prophet? We have some non-creature spells, so we can scry some cards. We'll take the Prophet. We crash through. If I attack, it comes in with a 1-1 counter. It's a 1 cost. First strike, maybe you draw your second card, not going to be our deck, draw cards, recursion, I think we're going to take the runner, lightning axe, oblivion, I can pay 6 mana and return something from the graveyard, omen of the forge is pretty good, we'll take omen of the forge, g2 lava mancer is pretty good in an aggro strategy, Ox is pretty good. We're gonna take the Lava Runner. Ooh, the Butcher came back. Because I think we're gonna go more of a red-black 
aggro than a sacrifice. The conjure is pretty good. Um, this is okay as a kill spell, but that's expensive. This is okay. This is also not great. I'm gonna take it though, because it's basically a grave digger. The captain, throwing aggro. The captain's pretty good. Flame spill is pretty good. Remana deal four excess to the controller. Yeah, I don't see any reason for the magus. I mean, I do, but I don't. Um, with Pyromads, we're not going to be drawing cards much. And then a dead card. Grub, Dragon Fodder. Dragon Fodder seems pretty good. There's Fanatic Amogus in here, too. Damage equal to Devotion. Um, I think here it's between Shock and Dragon Fodder. Because Dragon Fodder gives us 1 1s and sap outlets and shocks just a kill spell and we're gonna go with dragon fodder here again we can it gives us two one ones and gives us sack outlets gives us non-creature spell for this guy doesn't give devotion for annex so that's not great um i don't see us playing the demon agadim's awakening is still pretty good I do it for three, I can get like a one cost, two cost, three cost. And then I can do it for four if this is in the graveyard. Judith here seems really good. Um, that seems actually insane in this deck. We're going to go Judith here. Um, Dreadhorg Articanist is pretty good. Um, Carnival Carnage is pretty good. And then Runaway Steamkin is also pretty good. But I think Judith in here is good because we're like an aggro sack deck um screw the critics is okay grim initiate is pretty good explain mines in here or fleece bane ram sorry we also have a heartless act so i think it's between grim initiate and heartless act um so creature or kill spell that's our choices um if we're wanting to be more aggro i think we take the grim initiate so that's what we're gonna do and know that the Heartless Act won't wheel. This is pretty good for a sacrifice deck. Four cost two, two whenever something dies. Drain, so we'll take that. This is a really weird deck. Like, really weird. This guy is just great in an aggro strategy deck. Whenever something attacks deal one to attacking player, that just seems insane. This is going to be a really hard construction. I'll tell you that much. Um, I don't think we play Annex. Maybe we do. I think we can get rid of him. Hiding's Awakening is good. Ants with Devils. Goblin Instigator is pretty good in this deck, too. Return creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Explores. I think we're going to take the initiator. Or the instigator, sorry. Um, remember, I sacrifice a permanent deals one to any target. Enters battlefield for this kick. Each opponent discards cards. I mean, this is good in a sacrifice deck, but it's a 5 cost 5 5. We're going to take it. I don't think it's going to make it, but we'll take it. Fanatical Firebrand's good. Young Pyromancer's okay. But we don't really have many instants and sorceries. We have a couple, but not many. Shipping Fire's okay. But I think Fanatical Firebrand's just going to be our best choice here. Um, shock Wield. I don't think we play Mogus, so I think we're just going to take the Shock. Carnival Carnage Wield. Creature of Planes are one damage to that permanent controller. Three damage to target opponent and they discard two cards. I think that's just gonna be better than the Rage Hound, so we're gonna take that. Screw the Critics is still good. Current our instant sorcery. We also have a Dragon Skull Summit for fixing. We're just gonna take the fixing here. Nothing we really like. 
nothing we really like. Yep, nothing in our colors, so these are all just gonna get dumped into sideboard. Yep. Alright, this is gonna be a really hard construction. I think we lose lamp pad. I don't think we need it. Let's put the lamp pad sideboard. Scrounger is good, priest is good, brain maggot's okay, blood artist is good. So I think we're gonna go more of an aggro strategy. We have a lot of low drops. Brain Maggot's good early game. Um, I don't think we play the Prophet. One of the Forge is good. We need card draw, so that's okay. Bastion's good. Ballad's okay. Annex okay. I don't think we play Captain. Um, I don't think we play Noble. Also, I gotta get rid of a land, because I only play 16. Since this is a land, I think we can get rid of 2 and be fine. So we're just gonna go down to 15 with the Agadims. Because this acts as a land. Hellrider is good. Judith is great. Wizard's Lightning is okay. How many wizards do I actually have? Goblins, Cleric, Insect, Vampire... Pirate, warrior, soldier, one wizard. We have one wizard, so I think that's gonna be dumped. Just because for three mana, I think these two are just better. Again, the Thalid I feel like is okay, because when it when it's gone, it leaves back a one-one. We only need to drop one more card, so is good. I think we're gonna drop Brain Maggot. It's a good card, but then when they get rid of this, they get their card back. Yeah. Uh, I think this is about the best we're gonna get. Annex is okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna try it like this and hope for the best. Um, we're definitely gonna have a struggle if we're playing against like mono white and stuff like that just because they can go big and wide I think quicker than we can but we have a chance we definitely have a chance Alright, so if they play a turn 1-1-1, one, 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 we can get rid of it with the Carnival, and then turn 2 Butcher is really good. Hope for more lands. About the best we can hope for, right? And turn 3, we have Fight with Fire, Flame Spill, and then turn 4, we have Hell Rider, which seems good. What are you playing? Come on, play a 1 cost 1-1. One, one. Or even a 1 cost 0-1 oh, will be fine. Nope. So then we're just going to butcher and attack. So now we really need a land. Like, pretty badly. If we don't get a land, we're really not doing anything. So that's not great. And we're not doing anything, so that's good. He's going to become a 3-3, though. We still have Carnival if needed. Alright, maybe 15 is not enough lands. Try to get greedy and think I'm gonna get punished. That's not great. I mean, if we draw a land, we can just fight with fire? Oh my goodness. I think I fight with fire here. No, I definitely flame spill. Cause this deals five, this deal is four. Yeah, I definitely flame spill. And then attack for three. I mean, this butcher is just gonna get out of control really quickly if he doesn't deal with it. Next turn I can deal with pretty much whatever he plays. Um, if he doesn't play anything, I think we're going to Hellrider attack. But there's no way he just sits back and does nothing. Okay, 
Oracle of Moldiah is fine. What's on top? Okay. Um, hmm. So we didn't draw a land. But that's fine. Uh, he has to block here, right? He has five, six mana. If he has a land, he can play this next turn. It's a 7-7, seven, seven, which is pretty backbreaking. So if we fight with fire now and attack, he goes to 10, this becomes a 5-5. Five, five. He now has to block it every turn. If we don't do that, then our best play is going to be the Thalid. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to swing... If he blocks, that's fine. If he doesn't, that's also fine. I think. He's also still got two mana, so he could have a burn spell of some sorts. Which is okay. We're just gonna play the Thalid and hope for the best, right? We're hoping no land. So he can't play the 7-7. Seven, seven. He's just gonna wipe the board. This is gonna deal four to you. And get a one one on me. Oh, now I'm just gonna Hellrider. Get in four six. This only deals five to a creature, right? Yeah. This dealt five to a player. That'd be insane. We can play the seven seven now, which isn't good at all but I think I can still attack and then I have fight with fire and if he blocks the 1-1 one, one for some reason I can still fight with fire and carnival no he's just gonna get rid of the hell rider which I think is a good play on him but it's not a good play when I have Carnage. Because now it makes it forces him to discard both cards in hand. No, because he can sack Mindstone, draw a card, and then discard two, which is still fine. Because that only puts him at six mana. So if he tries to keep the seven mana, he'd have to top deck a land. So if we if we if he keeps that card, we know he has to top deck a land. Okay, he didn't keep it. Okay, so what does he have in hand is now the question. He can pull back Moldaya, right? That's Moldaya. Multani, sorry. He can pull back Multani, which doesn't really do anything. Can target instant or sorcery? What do you have in graveyard? Find finality. Okay. Huh. So what do we do here? We can claim the firstborn and attack for two. And then we can't play Annex. So I think right now, with him having find finality, we can play Annex and then Goblin Banneret, and that'd be pretty good. No, we can't play both, because I only have two red. I can fight with Fire this, play Scrap Heap. I think, I think I'm going to claim the Firstborn, attack for two, play try and force out that fine finality so I'm gonna play Banneret and Scrap Heap Scrounger to try and get him to play finality oh he can put two counters on his Tahana Claire and it'll still live I didn't even notice that 
because you do it a five. I thought Chronicler was a one two, so it would still leave the battlefield with fine finality. Well, that was a misplay then. If I would have remembered that, I think the best play would have been Fight with Fire on the Chronicler. Man. Really punting right now. No, he's just gonna find. Okay. Now he can play the 4 4 on the Chronicler, get rid of the Scrounger, which seems pretty good. If he does that play, though, we can fight, for, fight with fire and get rid of him, win the game that way. So, I think that his best play then would just play it as a 4 4. Yeah. But I still, yeah, I still win in that case. Because he can pull Moltani back, but he has nothing else to do. So I think he just punted with not fine fina without finality. Because now I just fight with fire him, and then attack for lethal. Because he blocks the scrounger and then takes two. Yep. Alrighty, that was really weird. He doesn't gain life from pulling this back, does he? No. Okay. Like, if he gains life from that, that'd be weird. Alright. That game was really all over the place. But, we ended up getting there. It wasn't very aggro -y. Um, I do think I need to put a land in, though. I do think I need to. With us being mainly red, I don't know why I put green. Red, I'm going to put in a mountain, and then I'm going to switch them out, so eight. Then go to my swamps. Switch these out for these. Just because I love these lands. These lands are great. Alright, so if we're going up a land, what do we get rid of? Now I hope you know, we put in a land and I'm now going to get mana flooded. <laughs> um, I think Thrill of Possibility is our least wanted card, because late game if we top deck this, if we're in top deck mode we can't do anything with it. So I think we got to get rid of that guy. We'll try it like this. With an extra land, I hope we can hit lands more often. So we can actually do things rather than sit there and do nothing. But again, whenever I play more lands than what I originally started with, I normally get flooded. With drawing too many lands, that is really bad. Because then you're not drawing spells, and you're still doing nothing. I feel like this is actually a really good start. Because I can turn two instigator into turn three blood artist. Which I feel is a really good start. Could be completely wrong with that. Oh, and now I have turn one banner vet. That seems really good actually. That's fine. Mill a card. Ooh, and it was a scrounger. <laughs> That was pretty good, right? Folio of Fancy, so he's a mill deck as well. So now I think I have to Omen of the Forge? Or do I just Priest? I think I can Priest. Because the next turn I play the Instigator, Tap, and then I can play Blood Artist. Yeah, we're just going to play the Priest and attack. What are you going to do? Make us draw zero? Can't. You make us draw zero. That's fine. Tap an artifact for no reason. Feels like a play I would do. It's fine. I'm still milling a card. Land. That's perfect. Because we got enough lands. And a heartless act is not great. Claim the first one is also not great. 
Um, hmm. What do we do here? I think I need the Omen of the Forge to get rid of the Wind Robber. Because it's going to be making me mill cards. Definitely playing the Mountain and not the Awakening. Oh, this makes us have infinite hand. That's right. I was wondering why I had that symbol. Still have 28 cards in the library, so I think I should be fine to just instigator here. Um, because I can't do multiple spells this turn. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get in for one, and then I'm gonna play the instigator. Eventually, I'm gonna have to start getting rid of my hand because of this guy. He can pay three and make me mill cards equal to my hand size, which isn't great. Also, I'm going to have to watch out what I exile with Scrap Heap if I'm ever going to play this. What do you do? It's a 3-4. It escapes, comes back with two 1-1 one -one counters. This seems good. But is this better than just playing Blood Artist? I think so, right? Now I think I just play this as a land here. But yeah, uh, man. That draw really does not make this easy at all. They have Scrap Heap and Priest. If I want to bring Scrap Heap back, I think I do play this as a land untapped. Because now I think I want to Scrap Heap back and play Blood Artist. What, what are you doing? You have nothing. Here's a Blood Artist. Now, do I swing? Leave one back to block? Yeah, I think that's okay. No, because I think I want to play Annex first. Because when these leave the battlefield, I create 1-1 one -one Satyrs, which I think are really good. And whenever a creature leaves, non-token creature, yes. Any creature. Low Strider's good. That doesn't get rid of Blood Artist. Okay. Man. Hellrider also seems really good. If I Hellrider Claiming Woe Strider too seems really good. Cause I can't claim the spawn. But if I Hellrider, I can attack with everything, deal a lot of damage. If I Annex, I can't claim. I think I want to wait for Annex. Hmm. Because I can Omen of the Forge down Wind Robber. I can then claim Woe Strider and get rid of himself. Uh, I feel... There's more text. Sacrifice another, another creature. So I'm going to Omen of the Forge. So he can't sacrifice himself, which is fine. I think I'm still going to get rid of Woe Strider, or er, Wind Robber. And it drains him. Then I'm going to claim... No, because I can't get rid of himself. I think I'm still going to save claim. No, I'm not. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the Woe Strider with Claim the Firstborn, and then go to combat. Attack with Woe Strider because he either takes three or he blocks to get rid of Woe Strider. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, still drain you. Right, I can't sack himself? No. I don't think that was 
the best play, but it's the play I made. Um, now I can sack this to scry and try and hit a land. And I can drain, just because this leaving doesn't trigger annex anyways. And then I drain. I definitely don't have lethal here, so I'm just scrying one. Swamp is not what I need, so I'm going to bottom that. I think that's fine. I don't know. That was probably the worst play I had. A better play probably would have been Annex or Hellstrider. I want to draw another Swamp. That's just great. Right? Maybe I need to get rid of a Swamp for a Mountain. Because I do have a lot more double reds than double blacks. What's he got? Meyer Triton is fine. Man, he just got rid of two pretty good cards. He can make me mill three cards if he wants. Um, I'm still at 23 cards, so that's fine. I draw another Swamp. Okay. Now I think I just annex here. Because... Yeah, because I want to wait to attack until I get annex on the field. Um, now I think I can attack fine. I mean, they won't be great attacks, because if I attack with these three, he can just block here, block here. I can bring Scrap Heap back, though, so I think that's fine. I'm going to attack with these three. Because, yeah, he can just block Spawn here, Wolf Strider here. If he wants to, he can Mire Triton here. He doesn't have to, he can just take one. No, he is going to block, it looks like. Which is fine. I think that's fine. That's not having Agadim. Um, I don't necessarily have to worry about which creatures I get rid of in the graveyard. I am bringing this back, though. I'm going to get rid of Banneret. Player draws two. Those are good cards. I had more red mana. Brain Maggot's gonna take Hellrider. If I draw a mountain, I can play Firebrand, get rid of Brain Maggot, and play Hellrider. But I need a mountain for that. That's not a mountain. So. I still. Still think playing out Firebrand is good, and I think playing Butcher is really good. So we're gonna play out Butcher. Um, do I get rid of the Brain Maggot now? I think I do. So we're gonna get rid of Brain Maggot. It's gonna get rid of two creatures for Blood Artist. Target you. Trigger, get a 1-1, one, one, get rid of that, Blood Artist Trigger, target you. I do think I need more mountains in the deck though. I'm gonna get in with Scrap Heap. I don't think I get in with Annex right now. I do think I get in with these guys though. Not Butcher. Or yes, Butcher? I think I just attack out here. Yeah, we're just going to attack out here and see what happens. Yep, saw that coming. Which is fine. Yep, saw that coming. It was either that or Scrap Heap. He really doesn't want Butcher living. So that's fine. Two creatures go away. Dreadhorde deals one. Blood Artist, Blood Artist, Blood Artist. And yep, then. Yep, I think that was lethal, actually. I didn't calculate it. I was either one off or I had lethal. It was one of the two. 
Again, really weird gameplay, but still got there in the end. There's probably a couple plays I could have played differently to play a little better. Like when I claimed and played um, the Omen instead of playing Annex, I might have been able to win a little quicker, but I don't know. All right, this hand seems really good. I can turn one in, uh, initiate into attack, play the runner, turn three, play Bastion. This seems just fantastic. Because again, if I attack, raid triggers, and he'll enter as a two-two. See if Carnage. No, not right now. So we're gonna play a land. Go to combat. He's letting me attack. So that's good. And we're just gonna play the runner. Comes in as a 2 2. Next turn, we play the Bastion in attack. He's also red black. Again, I forgot to switch out the swamps for mountains, but it's fine. Play this first, his kill spells. Um, we'll get rid of him and trigger Bastion. I mean, if he had a way to get rid of them, he would have played it before this hit, but it's fine. And when this leaves the battlefield, I get a 1-1 one, one as well. My goodness, more swamps. I need another red for Annex, though. So that's not great. Okay, he's going to get rid of the runner. Trigger, you lose one, I gain one. You take two. Do I just awakening for the runner alone? Sure. Just to get the runner back. As a tutu. Haha, because I attacked. Okay. So you get to look at my hand, discard a non creature card, so land. Wow, this makes you discard lands. And there's a mountain. So, I think I still full swing here. Because, that's fine. I'm like, if he blocks the Grim Initiate, um, Annex triggers. But, that's okay. What can, what does he do? Does he have board wipe? Okay, he's claiming Annex, which is fine. Okay, Cauldron, which means he can get rid of Annex. That's not great. No, Bastion's only when a creature I control dies. Can't block, so I'm taking two. And he's gonna Witch's Cauldron, get rid of Annex. It's fine, you get a 1-1. One, one. Gains life and draws a card. Okay. Um, I can attack with Runner next turn. I can attack with both this turn. That shock was a really good draw. Getting rid of his 2-2, and so I can get in for damage. Um, he's going to Tibble, make a 1-1 one, one Devil. And when 1-1 one, one leaves the battlefield, deals a damage. Priest is good. Um, I think I just still swing here at him and not Tibble. Yes, he can still make 1-1s. One oh, he has raised the alarm. That's not great. Okay, so he's getting rid of all my creatures, which is fine. I'm also getting rid of all of his. This triggers. Deals 1 to initiate. What? Oh, this guy has first strike? Nice. I didn't know he had first strike. <laughs> He apparently didn't it either, so I guess that's a plus side for us, right? If we draw claim the firstborn, that's pretty good. I don't have to block here. He's got a buff spell. I'd rather keep my creatures. What does he do here? Does he get rid of it with Witch's Cauldron, deal one to the 1-1? One, one? 
Okay. No, to the priest. Why would he do that? Oh, see, it's carnival, which is fine. He takes one. I don't gain life to the tibble, which is fine. And a scourger. Okay. They have only have a forge. Means I can get rid of the scourger. And keep going at him. But if I attack, he just chumps in front of the runner, blocks the 1-1. One, one. Because even if he triple blocks the runner, the runner still survives. Yeah, I think I just attack him with both. I don't think either one's getting through, but... Oh, the 2-2 two -two gets through. Okay. That's fine. Then you're going to take one from the Bastion. You're going to end the turn because if he tries to get rid of the runner, he takes one and then Omen finishes him off. Oh, that's a card. I think that's still fine. Um, Pass to combat. Gonna give that a plus one plus one counter. Go to attacks. He's probably attacking with the Seder and the 2 2. Um, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Now, what do I do here? Do I save the omen? Gains a life with the Witch's Cauldron. So, playing the Omen, targeting Aspirin, he's just going to get rid of it with the Witch's Cauldron. Then I can scry. I, the main reason I'm wanting to play this on his turn is because I want to scry. If I hit him, he'll still be at 2. If I draw a kill spell, I win. Right. Yeah, I'm just gonna hit him for two. Or the aspirin. This aspirin is gonna be a pain here soon. Hmm. I still think I target him with the omen. That might have been a misplay. Because if I try and hit anything, he's just gonna witch his cauldron. Um, definitely scrying. Charger and a mountain. The charger is great. I think I love the charger here. Yeah, the charger is just great here. Because um, if he gets rid of the charger, he loses. Yeah, so. I don't think it's game necessarily, but it's coming very close. Oh, you don't have haste. That's fine. I thought you had haste. That, that's fine, though. I think that's fine. Now he chumps and gets rid of it with the witch's cauldron. He gets rid of this, he takes two because of the Bastion and the Charger. Oh, if it's equipped, it has haste. That's right. I'm at 12, so I'm still at a pretty decent life total. He has a Bastion of his own. Alright. Um, and a Priest. And a land. Okay. Hmm. So the Aspirin's going to give a counter... I have to find like a flame spill? No, because then he just gets rid of the creature and the flame spill fizzles. If I block here with the charger, he takes two, has to witch his cauldron, or he witches cauldrons before damage is dealt. I definitely block here. That that's a hundred percent certain. And then I attack out and win. Right? Am I right on that math? I think I am. Because I attack. He either takes two or... Oh, he gains life with this Bastion. I totally forgot about that. This 
still have to hit him with this fire blade charger. So both bastions trigger, which does nothing, puts him to one still. He sacks with Witch's Cauldron, because both of mine are going to resolve first. So he has to sack with Witch's Cauldron now, or I win. So he's going to go to two, or three. Goblin Banneret is not great. I mean, it's okay. It's not great, though. How do I get through this? I really don't know. Hmm. Sack creature. I get rid of Banneret. Can you do it again? It costs seven, he has six. Oh, he can do it again. Okay, but that's not lethal on my part. If I draw a haste creature at that point that has more than one attack, I win. If he swings out. Um, hmm. Is he trying to find a way for lethal? I think he's trying to find a way for lethal. I think with him playing Chainer's Edict, there's a lot of things that could go wrong for him. But there's also a lot of things that could just go correct. Because if he Chainer's Edict, he just leaves a creature back, which would be the Aspirant. He attacks for six, puts me to four, and a Haste creature still doesn't get rid of him. If he leaves the Aspirant back, he didn't Chainer's Edict. He's just going to give the counter to the Priest. He's going to leave the Aspirant back, which is smart. It's very smart. You do not attack with Aspirant. What are you doing? Sir, you know a Haste creature, you just lose, right? Okay. If I block the Aspirant, I go to three. He goes to three. And then he Chainer's Edicts. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Still leaves me at one, though. And then I just have two coming back at him. If I throw a haste creature, he would... What? You can sack an any permanent? What? Oh. Well, didn't know that one. If I knew it said any permanent, I would have blocked you. I thought you said creatures. Oops, my bad. Well, it was bound to happen, right? Can't get lucky every game. Alright, try again. Two and one. Good starting hand. That's not. I keep forgetting to switch out my swamps. I still think this is a good hand, though. I didn't look at who's first. I'm first. So, Mountain Pass. I have a shock if needed. If not, I'm playing Dragon Fodder on turn two. Turn three, I can play Blood Artist, hold up shock. Oh, nope. Playing shock on turn one. Got it. Because that guy is annoying. Now I land into dragon fodder. Yeah, I definitely should get rid of a swamp for a mountain with this being a swamp. I didn't think of that. Because I draw a lot more swamps than mountains for some reason. Flame spill is really good here, I think. Yes, he gets a 1-1, one, one, but it gets rid of the lieutenant. Or do I just play blood artist banneret? Sure seems pretty good too. No attacks though. 
because now if I get rid of Lieutenant and attack and he can, gets rid of his creature as well, it's just a lot of damage with Blood Artist. Fearless Fledgling with a land. Uh, it's a flyer. Through a mountain, though. Now, I think I have to flame spill the fledgling. Because this deck also can't deal with flyers. But if he's coming in every turn with the flyer, I don't have to really worry about it. But it gets bigger every turn. Man. That was one card I didn't want to see. Um, I can definitely swing in with the banneret and pump him if he blocks, but I don't think he's going to block, which is fine, right? Because then I just don't pump him. Yeah, I just let damage go through, it's one free damage, and then I flame spill. Again, do I hit the fledgling or do I hit the lieutenant? If I hit the lieutenant, he takes one, but it's going to be really hard to deal with this lieutenant. But it's going to be even harder to deal with the fledgling. I think I just get rid of the flyer here, and then I can deal with the 2 3 somehow. Because it's not a flyer, and I don't have to worry about it as much. See, he was going to come in for three this turn. Oh, he plays a 3-4 with lifelink, so that's great. Here's a Grim Initiate. Into I can't do anything, so it's your turn. you do. If any of combat on your turn target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets a plus one plus one and trample. So you... Oh no, you're not an enchantment creature. Gets a 2-2 two -two flyer though because this is an enchantment. And he can target himself. This game is pretty much over. I need a kill spell. That is not a kill spell. I can get a lot of creatures on board. But can't do anything with them. Probably could have attacked here. He blocks the lieutenant, get rid of. Yeah, I think I should have attacked with Goblin Banneret. Life total is greater than your starting life. Total creature you control at plus one plus one. Whenever one or more creatures you control attack, gain life equal to the number of attacking creatures. Well, that's just great. Yeah, I think we've lost this game as well pretty quickly. Gain two, everything gets buffed. I guess that's fine, because there's nothing I can do about it. And Bastion of Remembrance into a full swing. I guess nothing really I can do about it. So what I can do is try for nothing, right? blocked one of them. Okay. I mean, I'm not playing this as a land, am I? I don't think so. Again, I'm pretty sure I've lost this game. And I've lost this turn, actually. So, yeah, that was... Quick and easy, right? I don't know, maybe saving flame spill there would have been the best choice. I don't know, I thought I would just have to get rid of him and he'd have almost nothing left, but nope, he had gas the whole way. So that was not good on my part. Saving the flame spill would have been a lot better, because then he just plays the Archon, I get rid of the Archon, and then he doesn't go crazy. Yeah, but how was I supposed to know he would have had an Archon? Guess that's magic for you, right? You win some, you lose a lot. Uh, 
I guess this hand is pretty good. Banneret into Priest, into Instigator, Activating Priest. Seems okay. This deck doesn't really have an amazing starting hand, does it? I've noticed that. It doesn't have an amazing starting hand ever. It's got okay starting hands, but I don't think it has amazing ones. What does he got on turn two? Playing green, red. Incubation Druid. Definitely playing Swamp, but now do I Omen of the Forge? I think I need to keep him off of mana. I mean, this seems like mediocre play. The next turn I'm able to Priest Charger. Do both, unless a Flame Spill is absolutely needed. 3-3 three, three, Hippo. How do I get in with the Banneret? Try and get rid of the 3-3? Three, three? Then I'm still able to play Flame Charger if need if I if that does happen. Sure, see what happens. Attack for one. Probably not blocking. Didn't think so. I'm gonna play Priest and Charger. Is he just going to draw a card? No, right? No, I didn't think so. I'm like, there's no need. Fiend Artisan is freaking crazy, though. I think Awakening is good. Um... I think I'm going to instigate her here, activate the priest, yeah, we're going to instigate her, hope he doesn't have anything to do with priest, does he, if he does, I can still activate it, instant speed, now we activate priest, so, you're going to sacrifice, submit, any number of target players each lose two life and sack a creature. Yeah, you. So I sacrifice two creatures. So I think that's going to be both 1-1 one, one goblins? Yes. Okay. You lose two and sack a creature. I draw a card and gain two mana. And I drew a swamp. Now I'm going to flame spill fiend artisan you take two and then attack for two seems like a decent play right maybe I mean if he gets rid of one of my one costs I can awakening for two next turn get back two creatures if not I think I'm just gonna crack omen those are some really good cards. Bon Shaman's not amazing. This guy's not amazing, but she's pretty good. I think he plays the Overgrown Battlements this turn. 0-4 that blocks really well. He's gonna play a 2-2. Um, I think that's a really good top deck. I mean, now I just get in for two, right? Because he blocks here, that's gonna die. If he blocks here, I pump it, and that's still gonna die. Yep, that seems pretty good. And he's whatever he blocks is gonna, he's also gonna take one from the bastion. And I still have creatures up for priest. I don't know, this just seems like a win-win attack. Either way, I'm pumping Goblin, right? Yeah. 
probably could have pumped him beforehand to mentor, but that's okay. Because I, I think either way I was going to pump him anyways. Yeah, because now I can hold up Priest for his turn for whatever he plays. Because if he has a land, he's got to Overgrown Battlements first instead of the instead of her because if she plays her I just activate priest and it's gone but if she's he's trying to get the counter then he plays her first that's really all dependent if he has a land or not if he doesn't have a land he can only play one of them okay plays the battlements Oh, he has three mana. I still think I priest here, right? I definitely still priest here. It's going to take four. Five from the firebrand. If he has something to deal with the priest, that's pretty good. Because he's got to sack the battlements now. And lose two life. I draw a card. Get two mana that I can't use. This guy's pretty good. Hmm. Because I can Awakening for Instigator Banneret. If I do that, or if I do like Charger Instigator, I can Priest on the, the Token and the Charger. That's two, four, five. I think I have to go for Lethal. So I grab the Charger. And the instigator. Auto pay. He has to get rid of priest or that's lethal. If you have a shock, if you have something to deal with priest, you have to play it now or that's lethal. A wilt also makes it not lethal. Which is fine. That is totally fine. Now I save it for his turn, so I can still th deal three damage. Okay, go to my turn. Do I have two instant sorceries. I do. So this has haste. Go to combat. Attack for five. Three seems really good. Don't attack with priest. What does he got? He's gotta have something, right? He left six mana up. If all he's got is something to do with Priest, that's fine. He does know that's still lethal, right? Cast a spell to where the mana cost X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. If I get rid of Priest, two other creatures, so I can't get rid of Priest. But he can cast something from his hand. Hmm. Do I activate the Priest here? 
think I do. Where are you? Submit. Get rid of this guy and this guy. This guy? If I get rid of this guy, it's fine, but he can also block and I still do it. So I think it's these two. Yeah, I'm gonna do these two. That's fine. Still have three damage. So I'm gonna cast her, which is fine. It's gonna be a two three. So he can live, which is fine. Next to blockers. I can use the two man anyways. Yep. Deal one. And then I play a mountain into fight with fire? Getting rid of her? Or do I just play the Thalid? Her on the field is going to be really hard to deal with anything. Yeah, I think I'm just going to fight with fire. Could have been an argument for Thalid. It was probably also a bad idea to use Priest. So if I didn't, I would have had four attackers. He would have still taken three. So give me a 3-3 three, three so you can draw a card? That doesn't seem right. That seems like a good play. Because this turns into a 3-3, three, three. it has no other abilities. But, too bad for you, I drew a shock. That's just luck of the cards. That's all that was. Luck of the cards. All right, three and two. Oh, cancel, 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 cancel. Cancel. Mainly because I gotta switch out of Swamp for a mountain. I'm only playing one more mountain than a Swamp, but that's fine. because I keep feeling like I get stuck on mountains a lot. And I've played five games and never not seen Dragon Skull Summit once. So that's also weird, but one card in a 40 card deck, it'd be really hard to see that one card every game. But out of five games, that's a little, little weird. And then I see it in my starting hand, which I need a mountain for a turn one play. <sighs> Still think of this as fine. But a turn two instigator into turn three, hoping to draw a mountain so I can dragon fodder and charger. Ugh. And it's just too good to pass up though, right? Because with a turn 2 instigator into a dragon fire, it gives me 4 one ones on turn 3. Which seems pretty slow, to be honest with you. I play dragon school summoning, because I need the red. Man, even with me pulling out a, a swamp for a mountain, I'm still drawing most of the swamps. Why is that? I really need a mountain next turn so I can charger and dragon fodder? If not, I have flame spill if needed. Hmm. Options. Still no red. So. With no red mana. You, this doesn't trigger this. That's fine. Yeah, because this loses the counters, it doesn't die with the counters. It's probably an early flame spill again, to be quite honest with you. I probably shouldn't have used it there, but yeah. Saw that coming. 
Um, if I attack, I can fanatical firebrand to get rid of the scourge. Because if he's a counter deck, that scourge is just gonna get big and it's gonna be hard to deal with. Yes, that'll be my only play for this turn. But if I'm attacking, he's probably not blocking. Okay, never mind. He is gonna block. Yeah, 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 it gets two counters, it's whatever. With me not having red mana, this is really going really poorly for me. In five games, too, I also haven't seen a Judith, which still sucks. Can I have a red mana, though? Thank you, because now I can play Remembrance and Charger. Oh, I didn't see he had three mana still. That means he might have a counter spell. Great. Please don't counter this. It's like one of the only things in my deck that can win. Okay, so we're good. So now we just play the charger and pass. If he attacks, I can triple block and get rid of the arachnid. Arachnid, sorry. Um... He has a buff spell that's kind of useless. Alright, you, you can do anything. What are you doing, man? The hungry burger. He is attacking. Is he wanting me to get rid of it? I don't think so, right? He has to exile four cards? Definitely gonna triple block here. Deal one to the Arachnid. Yes, the Oslith gets two counters again. He can't bring back the Arachnid. Is that your plan was to bring back the arachnid? Because you can't. I do not know how the escape mechanic works. It's possible that he doesn't know what the escape mechanic is. It seems like that was it. Alright, I guess we're gonna play Scrappy. See what happens. If he counters it, I think I just bring back Scrappy. If not, I'm playing Dragon Fodder. Did nothing. Dragon Fodder. Give me two one ones. I'm just gonna counter that one. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. Not not great, but that's fine. Now what are you gonna do? You still can't bring back the Arachnid. You need one more card in exile. Or in graveyard two exile. Okay, return scrap heap to hand. Next turn you can bring back your um, arachnid. How much damage to a player proliferate? That's not great. But this turn I get to play both. I mean, I think now I'm on a losing streak, right? I don't think I win from here. Because now he just attacks with an informant and proliferates on both. That don't seem great for me. And he can play the Arachnid as a 4-7? Or as a 4-5? That also doesn't seem great. I think this is going to be my third loss. Oh, that's a card. Okay. Give me a 1-1 one, one and you take one. Now he attacks with the Informant. And proliferates three of his creatures. Um, I ha 
have to fight with Fire the Informant, don't I? But this Ozlet sucks. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm not winning this game. I am not winning this game at all. Next turn he plays the Arachnid, puts three counters on the Hydra because it has Trample. Yeah, I don't have any way to come back from this. This was unfortunate. Very unfortunate. I know that seems like a pre-concede, but if you look at it in the long run, I really couldn't do anything. So yeah, that's not great. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna end it here. Um, that that was unfortunate, um, both times. The first one, the flyers got me, and the second one, it was very unorthodox. It seems like the deck should have worked, but didn't. So yeah, we're gonna end it there. Um, I will see you guys in the next one.